the biggest part of inbound closing that we you know teach, preach, and practice is going to be around ethics. So uh, we want to make sure that we have a very good understanding of our prospect, of their problem, of the solution that they're looking for, so that then we can effectively, you know, help them uh, plug the holes, right, uh, or solve the problem. So we want to be really, really dialed in on that. We want, need to have very genuine tone when asking questions. This is the Full Stack Sales Pro. All right, y'all. So today we are going to be talking about tonality and how important it is when you're on the phone. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or any other podcast platform that you guys are listening on um, just so that we can continue to get you as much information as possible. But today we're going to be talking about tone. Tone is hugely important. Um, it is probably one of the most underrated parts of any sales call in any conversation that you have in your day-to-day -day life. A uh, reason why it's so important uh, is we see it lost in translation through emails and text messages and stuff all the time, uh, where somebody can have a message sent to them and get it read in the wrong tone, um, which is why it's hugely important that we use our tone effectively when we have the opportunity to do so. So tone is going to be something that not only conveys your idea, uh, the importance of that idea, the urgency behind it, uh, but also your intentionality which is very, very important when it comes to sales, because I'm sure you guys have heard me say, in order to sell anything, people need to know, like, or trust you, and ideally all three. And the way that we can really build that effectively and be able to do it over and over and time and time again, to be able to show that we actually care is through tone. So I want to talk to you about, uh, first and foremost, building trust. Trust is set immediately through tone, uh, because they can tell whether somebody is genuine and really wanting to help them or not. Um, very, very uh, part of rapport, very much so a part of setting our agenda. And even just hopping into the very beginning of discovery, tone is very important. Uh, you can get on the phone and you can tell when somebody's in a good mood, if somebody's in a bad mood. You can also tell when somebody has you know, a really good heart or maybe a little disingenuous and you get a little bit of uh, kind of snakes in the grass vibes from somebody. Um, so tone at the very beginning is hugely important. People make snap judgments. Uh, it's how we operate as people. Um, you know, we are designed to survive, right? Which means that human beings make snap judgments about their situations all the time uh, in order to make sure that we're continually putting ourselves into the right position. So that is a part of human nature and tone is going to be the way that we overcome that initially uh, out of the gates. So even something like, hey, so-and-so, how are you? This is Corey with you know, Sales Pro Academy or whatever offer it is that you guys are working on. Um, just have the tone that conveys, I'm here to help you. Now, we also want to make sure that we don't have a sales guy tone. Uh, you guys can hear that as soon as you pick up the phone, if you have like an unsolicited call or anything like that. I would imagine most of you guys probably don't answer those calls. But if you do, you can tell pretty much immediately when you're talking to a salesperson. Usually that tone is very high, huge amounts of energy. They usually call you by your, your name and immediately where they're calling from within their first like 10 seconds. Hey, this is Corey with Sales Mentor, right? I can know pretty much immediately that that is going to be a sales call. Whereas I still want to have, you know, obviously my, my solid tone to be able to show that I am energized and I'm excited to talk to them, but I want it to come across uh, more like I really do care about them uh, versus I'm really just excited to be on the call. I'm a really high energy guy. Um, so more so like, Hey, is this so-and-so? Hey, what's going on? This is Corey over at Sales Pro Academy. Really excited for our call today. Um, you know, do you have 30, 45 minutes? That tone right there is very different from the like huge swinging up tone that we see uh, that happens all the time on sales calls. Um, so out of the gates, we want to make sure that we have a very genuine tone, be you, show up as you, um, and people will be able to feel that. Second part of tone, uh, especially in inbound sales, we are known for asking questions, right? Sometimes we ask why and why and why and why, just like uh 
petulant children do every once in a while. Uh, but because we ask so many questions, we have to make sure our tone is really dialed in because what we don't want our prospects to feel is like they're in an interrogation room, right? The, the light swinging overhead and, you know, it's cold, dark, they're all tied up getting asked question, 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 question. So we want to make sure that we have our tone really dialed in when we're asking questions and we want it to continue to come across as genuine. So you're going to see this as a theme throughout tone uh, is that people can hear immediately when you are being genuine and when you're not. Um, so we want to make sure that we have a genuine tone. Now, when we are asking questions, we want to make sure that we ask questions with up tones at the end. Up tone is going to show genuine interest in the answer. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Right. With this kind of an up tone swing. Now, if I ask questions with a down tone, that is going to sound like an interrogation. It's going to sound like I am asking you a question that I know the answer to when we have downtone uh, questions. Why did you do that? Downtone, right? So we want to make sure that we have really high uptone questions. That's going to show very genuine interest in the answer uh, versus having downtone, downtone, downtone. That's going to really force people into feeling like they're being interrogated. So we want to make sure that uh, obviously we're not doing that, but we're allowing people to tell their story. We want to make sure that we really do understand where people are at um, and the safest environment that we can create through tone for our prospects is going to allow us the most amount of information possible. Now, I know you guys have heard time and time and time again, the biggest part of inbound closing that we you know, teach, preach and practice is going to be around ethics. So uh, we want to make sure that we have a very good understanding of our prospect, of their problem, of the solution that they're looking for, so that then we can effectively, you know, help them uh, plug the holes, right, uh, or solve the problem. So we want to be really, really dialed in on that. We want, need to have very genuine tone when asking questions, finishing with our up tones so that people feel like they can tell you anything and everything in regards to their problem. Now, tone also doesn't necessarily mean up tone, down tone. It can mean loud voice on the phone, or it can mean that I bring it down and I have to talk slower and softer. Now, believe it or not, hear me now, believe me later. Um, if you need to have a very heavy landing statement or question, if you're challenging somebody, it's never going to be through getting louder. And I know that that sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but hear me now, believe me later. Uh, human beings have inverse reactions when they talk to each other. So when one person leans out of the conversation, the other person is forced to lean in and vice versa. If our prospect leans out of the conversation, that kind of forces us to lean in to kind of reel them back in. So when we talk quieter and I slow my voice down and I have a little bit more breath behind it, it sounds very intentional. But what it also does subconsciously for the person who's on the phone is it causes them to lean in. So when I soften my statement down, I can have a much heavier landing statement, especially if it's really serious in regards to their situation, and especially if you are challenging somebody. Because uh, that's going to show a, a few things. One, it's going to cause them to lean in, which means that it's going to hit a little bit heavier. Two, it's going to show a lot of confidence in you as a salesperson. The least confident person is the loudest person in the room. So when we slow ourselves down, we talk a little bit quieter, we're going to be able to show a lot of confidence. But the third thing, which is honestly the most important, especially when challenging somebody, is we're going to be able to display empathy. You can't do that in a yelling match, a screaming match. You can't do it by trying to talk over somebody or anything like that. Um, I want to do it by slowing down, softening my statements and allowing my tone to say like, hey, I care about you. But I also think that you're making the wrong choice because of X, Y, Z reason. So we want to uh, allow them to have that feeling, too, of genuine care of I am here to take care of you, but I'm also not going to talk over you to do that. Uh, which is going to build a lot of that trust. Because remember the three things, know, like, and trust. Uh, so we do have to make sure that if we are giving a very heavy-handed landing statement, we actually need to slow down and we need to talk softer. Okay. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about is authenticity. 
So tone comes through practice. It's not something that, you know, you can just turn on in the middle of a phone call, uh, because if you haven't practiced it or you haven't done any of the role plays or practiced it in your real life or anything like that, it's going to sound very forced. It's going to sound very fake. Um, and it's not going to allow you to get across your idea that you are trying to do so. And where a lot of people actually have a hard time in this transition is when they go from phone sales to Zoom sales which is a huge differentiator, right? When we're looking at phone sales, my body language doesn't matter. My facial expression doesn't matter. What my mouth looks like when I'm talking to you doesn't matter. My hand gestures don't matter, any of that. But when you hop into Zoom, tone is displayed not only through the tone of my voice, but through my body language, through the way that I lean and talk, the way that I use my hands, the way that I lean out if somebody says something or if I lean into a Zoom call, uh, tone is going to be displayed through all of those. Now, I know that we obviously associate tone with actually the pitch and sound of my voice, but tone uh, in a Zoom environment or in a, in a person to person in, in uh, like face to face environment is actually broken down through all of the ancillary stuff as well body language, hand movements, am I engaged, am I not engaged, those kinds of things. So we want to make sure that if we get really good at mastering our tone on the phone, that if we get into a Zoom environment or an in-person environment, that we don't have the tone that doesn't match everything else that we're doing. We want our tone to match our body language, to match our hand movements, to match all of those kinds of things. Because if not, it will sound fake. It'll sound forced. It won't sound real disingenuous uh, for sure. Uh, so you want to really, really, really make sure that you use that. Um, and the very last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with is we want to be calm, cool, and collected during the call. Now, it doesn't mean like don't have emotions, right? If somebody is telling you something exciting, you know, be excited in that. If they're telling you something that is really hard for them that they've gone through, sharing that empathy, absolutely. But we want to revert back to our calm, cool, and collected demeanor, because that's going to allow us to control the conversation. If we get emotionally involved, if we get tied to the outcome or those kinds of things, that could influence our ability to get advice. Uh, and that could influence our prospects' ability to actually get their problem solved uh, or serviced in the highest level possible. So we do just have to make sure that we are not getting too far leaned in or leaned out, obviously. Um, we do want to make sure that we're caring about our prospects uh, in regards to their you know, health, well-being, situational awareness, solution, all of that, but uh, also challenging them you know, when they get in their own way. So uh, tone, hugely important, really, really, really make sure that you use it, dial it in. It is going to be the first tool in your belt and hopefully the last tool you'll ever use on a call. Uh, so make sure that you guys are dialed in on tone, be genuine. If you have any questions about it, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Um, so if you have any questions at all in regards to tone, find somebody on our team. We'll happily answer any and all of your questions. Uh, and as always, if you need anything at all, give us a holler. Hope this helps. See you guys a little later.